A new week and a new dev diary it's here boyos. This time we learn about the new monuments that they're going to be adding in 1.34 as well as about the new balance changes. There's not going to be so much of a playing toll meta in the next update because they nerfed to death economic and quantity ideas but still they're pretty powerful however the meta likely will change when the new update comes they start this dev diary with a brand new monument in dallas kogan the dallas kogan uh, copper mine and this is a little bit overpowered in my opinion tier one and two are okay but then when you get tier three you get plus nine local goods produced. That means you get plus nine copper goods produced as well as global artillery cost minus 20%. That is a lot of money you're saving up on artillery, by the way. But not only that, the nine local goods produced to put this into EU4 terms means 45 development, 45 production development in that one province because nine goods produced is the equivalent of 45 since one one goods produced is five production development so if you want you can get your copper mine there to 10 production development before you even upgrade this thing and then after you upgrade this uh, monument to level three you're gonna have 55 production development in one copper mine which essentially means you will basically be getting close to a hundred ducats from one province in the 1500s that is a little bit too powerful in my opinion I'd say maybe seven local goods produced is great Nine is a bit of an overkill, my boys. <laughs> Just my opinion, though. I'm still happy to see that they added this in. It's going to make Sweden even more overpowered than it already is. We've got other monuments as well. We also have the uh, Kronberg Castle, built by King Eric VII. And it is essentially a great way of getting some naval tradition from protecting trade. You will be protecting trade anyway, right? In your Lubeck node. So if you upgrade this bad boy, you're going to get a lot more naval tradition from protecting trade in that node as well as well in any node really as well as you get local defensiveness naval combat off of own coast within that particular region so that's i think the katigat see i don't remember what it's called and you get some mercantilism when you upgrade it you get up to 10 mercantilism after you fully upgraded the monument the city of visby which is in gotland also gets its own monument which can have up to minus 50 percent local shipbuilding time and hostile disembarkment time as well and you get privateer efficiency since this is a pirate nation plus 50 and domestic trade power now if you really want to cheese bowl this the privateer efficiency you can really double down on this by getting more of these monuments from the Caribbean that also give out privateer efficiency in other places so potentially if you add all the monuments and all the other ways of getting privateer efficiency in EU4 you can get up to about 300 even more privateer efficiency which is a lot of money if you want to have a specific role-playing game where you just basically try and get as much privateer efficiency as you can right trakai island castle is also getting added so i guess all the lithuanian peeps in the chat be like yo we're getting our first monument hello not 100 percent sure if this is actually in lithuania no no it is trakai is in lithuania <laughs> so bad boy is getting a prestige a monthly splendor is pretty great actually and the best thing in this monument is the reform progress growth because as you guys know in the next update reform progress is a a lot more important since we have extra tiers for reforms and we can use reform progress for other things as well that's why they're trying to make it so there's more ways of getting reform progress overall in the game itself and the salvador de bahia one of the oldest cities is established by the portuguese in brazil that's right brazil is getting its own monument now the most lackluster region of eu4 south america actually is getting something with this update don't get too excited though it's good but it's not amazing we do get global Global trade power and settlers plus 10 as well as 0.5 goods produced whoa whoa hold on a second just realized this is 0.5 goods produced globally not locally so that's the equivalent of adding 2.5 production development in every single province that you have so if you have a hundred provinces say that means you're getting 250 production development once you upgrade this bad boy to level 3 never mind this is 
is actually one of the strongest monuments right now. Holy mother of God, that is actually amazing. <laughs> Mabanza Magongo as well as added the seat of the Kingdom of Congo, where you need to have a Congo culture accepted or be Congolese yourself. And it offers up to one legitimacy, all estate privileges to be revoked regardless of loyalty and influence. So if you have less loyalty than influence, you can still revoke the privileges. That's interesting. That's something very different. You also get institution spread and true faith provinces. That's great as well. And reform progress growth again, like the previous monument. I really hope that they change some of the old monuments as well. It would be nice to get reform progress from other already existing monuments since they are adding this feature to the new ones as well. We also get the historical city of Harar Jugol, a pilgrimage from Muslims with dozens of mosques and shrines. I've never heard of the city actually. Where is this? Okay, so apparently this Harar Jugol is in Ethiopia. <laughs> I, I, I would have never guessed that. So wait, Ethiopia already has like two monuments, right? Ethiopia is getting another monument? Well, the other one you have to be Coptic. So I'm guessing for this one you have to be Muslim, right? Since it's a Muslim uh, monument and it kind of makes it so that if you go Muslim as uh, Ethiopia, you have another monument to replace the one that you're losing, right? And apparently Harar Juro here is offering prestige per development from missionary and stability cost modifier, not bad, as well as when upgraded unlocks decision which allows to embrace legalism at below minus 50 piety and mysticism above 50 piety. Dujing Yang is also added which is an ancient irrigation system from the Sichuan region of uh, China, which is one of the most beautiful regions of China, by the way. If you ever visit China, I definitely recommend you check out Sichuan. I've been to that area a couple of times. Chongqing and Chengdu in those parts are absolutely amazing. And I want to give a big thank you to the uh, sponsor of this video, the Chinese government. Uh, I really hope I get those 50,000 social credits that I was promised for giving this shout out. I'm just kidding. I do mean it though. Sichuan is very beautiful. You guys should check it out but yeah no this is not sponsored this it's a, it's a joke okay so uh china here offers us province governing cost reduction for the area as well as globally monthly devastation reduction it's not amazing but it's still something i guess and because ming if you do play as ming of course you have a lot of money so it's okay to upgrade all of the monuments i guess but now is when we get into the juicy stuff because we do have ideas and policies rebalance and boy are these rebalances gonna affect the meta of the game massively so they start off by saying that they did decide to change the meta. That's why they're changing this, right? They are tired of the same old ideas getting picked all the time. Ideas giving national manpower and land force limit are nerfed to combine them with the new changes in the combat system. We felt there already are many different sources of manpower and land force limit available to the player. And that also some ideas were heavily favored over others. Quantity, yes, that is true. Pretty much quantity is the strongest idea in the game and the current patch. And the next patch after the changes, I hate saying this, but I still feel like quantity is still the strongest. We're also nerfing both economic ideas and economic quality policy development cost as we felt that we already introduced a fair amount of development cost elsewhere. And we wanted to buff some underdogs in the idea groups such as espionage, trade and naval to make them more viable. So let's see what they actually do, right? First off, innovative ideas offers plus one leader without upkeep. That is completely useless. Let me tell you why that's completely useless. Leaders without upkeep in the previous patch, so that's already implemented in 1.33, are very easy to get because you get more leaders without upkeep based on the amount of land force limit that you have. So if you have a lot of land force limit, you get a lot of leaders without upkeep. That's why going quantity give you a lot of extra free leaders without even having that specified in the idea groups is just one of the byproducts of having a huge amount of land force limit. What else does innovative give us? Well, it gives us plus one free policies that is actually super freaking strong for the late game not for the early game because you already get your first one free policy right for all three of the different policy categories to get the second free policy you would have to be in the 1650s 1700s so you actually take advantage of the second free policy there but the thing is innovative ideas unless you take it in the early game and the late game it's pretty much an overall useless idea because the advisor cost reduction in the late 
game doesn't matter since you're gonna either have the monuments or you're gonna have the economy to get as many advisors at level 5 as you want to and the other things that bring bonuses from the innovative ideas like the extra innovativeness gained are good in the early game are useless in the late game because you're already gonna have 100 innovativeness in the late game that being said economic ideas is getting nerfed instead of minus 20 we get minus 10 percent dev cost reduction from unlocking all the economic ideas so it is a significant nerf it is basically 50 percent nerf but still worth it espionage ideas now offers covered action relation impact minus 50 percent vetting also grants minus 0.1 yearly corruption is too little honestly i'd say unless it's minus 0.5 and no i know that's a lot of corruption reduction but unless it's minus 0.5 no one's gonna pick I espionage ideas i really have no incentive still then we also get uh, audit checks replaced with blackmailing which offers reasons to accept vassalization and monthly favor modifier this is a really good one actually the thing is if you're gonna go espionage ideas i'm guessing you're gonna do that as a small nation so as a small nation reason to accept vassalization dean is not gonna be enough because there's a lot of other things that come into play here like your base economic output like the size of your country and so on, Diplo reputation and all that. And um, considering that most nations would take espionage if they're small and want to roleplay that, I'd say 25 reason to accept vassalization would be more fitting rather than 15. But it's good to see that it's changed because previously espionage was completely useless. Now it actually does offer some things. And we also get bonus from support rebel efficiency of 100% instead of 50. That's doubled and reduced covered action relation impact by minus 50%. So that's minus 100 covered action action relation impact i'm not sure if this is uh scaled or how it works because considering you also have state propaganda with the covered action impact minus 50 if it means you get no covered action relation impact at all after you finish uh, espionage ideas maybe it's worth it from role-playing perspectives 100 worth it i think the main thing that is lacking from espionage ideas is something that affects your country either economically or militarily so let's say for example if espionage idea offers maximum attrition plus one say as your bonus then it would be a little bit more viable right to be picked as your fourth or fifth idea after the first few ideas because let's face it when you think about these things you need to think about the position in which these ideas are picked the first few ideas are always going to be economic and military ideas or diplomatic ideas depending on your play style and what kind of a run you're going to have and then after those ideas you pick the runt of the litter right you pick the espionage the, all that other crap that's left innovativeness and so on and espionage is not one of the favorites right now because it just doesn't offer anything that impacts you in the mid to late game as it would in the early game right and in the early game you don't want to pick espionage because you want to boost up your economy and your military so you need to add something to espionage that makes it a little bit more juicy from those two perspectives trade ideas are getting a revamp as well now decrease promote mercantilism cost by 25 percent nobody ever promotes mercantilism let's face it there's a lot of other things you can do with diplo points you will never use it for promoting mercantilism you will always use it for developing your provinces so unless mercantilism Mercantilism cost is not diplo points and it is cash. Let's say, oh, this is actually, hold on, that's a really good idea. Instead of using diplo points for promoting mercantilism, why not make promote mercantilism 500 ducats? And then you reduce that by 25%. Because no one will use their diplo points for mercantilism. I don't think anyone I've ever, I've never seen anyone using it unless they're really new and they don't know what they're doing, right? But if it costs 500 ducats, it's worth it because it's expensive for the early game, right? As you go along in the 1500s and you have that 500, you also want to boost up your mercantilism so you get more of the share in the trade node that you are going right maybe that's something to consider if anybody watches this video from the pdx team change diplo points for mercantilism with cash just saying free trade also adds plus two merchant trade power that is really good and we also decrease trade company investment cost by 25 that is actually really really good because that's a lot of money you invest like a thousand ducats for some of those buildings so that's 250 ducats reduction that is amazing and you also get bonus for burgers plus 10 percent and loyalty also amazing i like that because all of these are also gives they're not replacing anything that trade already offers they're just increasing what trade offers so that's great i think trade is going to be a lot more picked in the first three ideas because of this since it influences your economy massively now exploration ideas now gives plus 10 percent settler chance that's way better than before 10 percent settler chance makes a massive difference and they also get 25 percent trade income from global empire that's also good some big 
changes for aristocratic ideas, boys, because Noble Knights offers 20% cost reduction instead of 10% and 15% Cav Combat ability instead of 10%, as well as you get 33% National Manpower instead of 20% and Mercenary Manpower 25%. So aristocratic ideas is moving up in tier right now. It is as close to quantity ideas as it will ever be. And the 20% Cav Cost reduction is a big, big deal right there because it's making cavalry a lot more viable since let's face it most nations that will pick aristocratic ideas are going to be eastern nations that already have decent cavalry unit pips right divine idea offers 25 percent manpower and true faith provinces some uh, nerfs around as well for indigenous ideas apparently and offensive ideas is giving 10 percent special unit force limit and 15 percent land force limit overall instead of the uh, 20 percent land force limit that it had before quality also offers 0.5 Navy tradition and quantity idea was nerfed 33% manpower and 33% land force limit instead of 50% as well as naval ideas offers plus one impact on siege 10% extra ship durability and minus 100 naval barrage cost instead of plus 10% ship durability this is actually absolutely amazing you know why this is amazing because now naval ideas is viable before naval ideas and defensive ideas were the worst I don't think anybody that knew how to play this game actually pick those well maybe they pick defensive as their last idea in a multiplayer to get a bit of morale boost right but um the fact that you get naval barrage minus 100 means that it's going to be free to barrage forts now but here's the big problem right barraging forts for free is going to be available after you finish all of the naval ideas so this is not viable for your first three ideas so unless you take this as your first three ideas you're never going to take naval ideas because 50 mana points for naval barrage in the 1500 1600 is not going to be that much since you're going to have level 5 advisors you can have good leaders and on and mana points is going to be a lot easier to use for barraging forts then we also get policy rebalance instead of minus 10 percent dev cost reduction quantity economic gives minus five percent land maintenance modifier which is absolute trash and innovative quality now gives infantry combat ability 15 percent instead of 10 percent so what they're trying to do here is they're trying to make people get innovative quality first instead of economic quantity first is the change significant it is we're basically losing minus 20 percent dev cost reduction from the economic quantity meta and we're gaining kind of gaining 10 percent dev cost reduction from the all power cost reduction from having a hundred innovativeness but that is only if you take innovative first but then innovative if you take it first and you get 100 innovativeness, it's the same like the current economic, since that also offers minus 10% dev cost reduction. So it's an interesting pickle, and I'd say they're pretty well balanced, but let's see. And we also get aristocratic espionage with 15% cav combat ability instead of 10%, so that's definitely going up the scales. All of those policy changes behind, let's also talk a little bit about the crownlands changes. You don't get tax modifier anymore from uh, having high crownlands, instead you get up to 50% a reform progress growth that is a significant change like i said before reform progress is a lot more important now a lot harder to get and it's going to make it a lot more appetizing to actually go for high crownlands now because of that reform progress compared to before they've also redone how governing capacity affects the game now since uh, being over governing capacity offers you admin efficiency reduction so that is a big big problem boys because admin efficiency is one of the most important modifiers in the game if you you want to do a world conquest so the problem is now if you're going to be over your governing capacity it's going to be a lot harder to do that world conquest now what did they do in order to fix this or to give a bit of a balance let's say well they made it so that courthouses and town halls no longer require a building slot similarly the state house no longer requires a building slot and the state house was buffed like crazy it now gives 25 percent governing cost reduction in that entire state where it is built as well as a flat minus 25 governing cost reduction essentially you can have up to a hundred development each in every one of those provinces in that state where you have a state house and you will be paying close to nothing if you have both the town halls and the state house built since you're gonna have 75 percent reduction for governing cost and the flat 25 on top of that the idea is that this is not meant to necessarily stop you from doing that world conquest but it is meant to make you build these buildings as you go along towards doing that world conquest there's also been some mis 
miscellaneous changes that will affect the game a lot. So for example, expand infrastructure now gives out local develop cost minus 25% instead of minus 5%, which is a massive difference. That is five times the increase in that, boys. So that means you will want to use expand infrastructure a lot more, which also means for playing toll, you don't necessarily need to go for quantity economic. So you can start playing toll from the really early part of the game. I'm talking 1444, boyos. We also get rampers giving out one combat roll bonus for defender. So rampers already are pretty decent. Not really amazing because they take out the manufacturing slot, right? But with the one combat roll bonus that they offer, it would be really amazing to build ramparts and fortifications that are in mountains. You get the mountain bonus, you get the rampart bonus, you get the fort bonus. So you're going to completely crush the enemy if you fight them in that defensible location. So make sure you use ramparts in the next uh, update. Pagan religions now are also able to force the religion if the majority of the country has that religion. So that means Tangri and Animist, with the exception of Nahuatl, Mayan, and Incan. They exempt because they have the primitive status. You also get A impact and targeted nation minus 30% instead of minus 10% from having a spy network there. Scorch Earth offers 0.25 local devastation monthly alongside the uh, minus 50% hostile movement speed. So it's going to be a lot more important that you use Scorch Earth carefully since it can potentially destroy your economy. And the last major impact here is the Crimeans become a tributary state of the Ottomans instead of a march of the Ottomans when the fate of Crimean Khanate event happens. This is actually way better because historically the Crimeans did become a tributary of the Ottomans, not a march. I have to mention that I was expecting them to release the DLC this month, but considering they have not released it yet and it's already the 27th and August is the month when they have their vacation, like an entire month vacation in Sweden if I'm not wrong, that probably means that we're going to see this released in September. PDXCon. If you guys enjoyed the video, consider subscribing as well. And until the next time, check out this awesome Florence video. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support. If anybody else would like to also support me, you will find the links in the description.